Urban Outdoor Adventures, teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. This week on Urban Outdoor Adventures, Sean and Blake are pre-fishing for a tournament on beautiful Rice Lake. Sean booked into a resort located on the south side of Rice Lake and Rosneath, near Harwood, Ontario. Rice Lake is only a one hour and 20 minute drive from Toronto, one hour and 35 minutes from Kingston, and a mere 20 minutes from Peterborough. Simply take the 401 highway east or west to Highway 28 North, then take Northumberland Road 9 to Lilac Valley Road, and follow the signs to Golden Beach. Numerous rental accommodations can be found nestled around the shores of Rice Lake. Sean chose this particular resort as it offers a variety of amenities for anglers and families alike, including a convenient boat ramp and docking facilities in a sheltered marina. Accommodations are comfortable and affordable. Rice Lake is part of the Kawartha chain of lakes. Due to heavy fishing pressure from recreational and tournament anglers, fishing can be tough at times. First time visitors should be prepared to cover water in order to find larger fish. A good marine chart is essential. Fortunately, all fishing tournaments held on Rice Lake are catch and release events, ensuring that the big bass get to fight another day. Sean and Blake observed hook marks on several of the larger fish they caught, proving that catch and release works. Many released larger fish can become hook shy over the course of the summer. Perseverance while presenting subtle presentations will pay dividends. This week's target species are smallmouth and largemouth bass. Other popular sport fish species available, walleye, muskie, carp, perch, and panfish. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. I got one going. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, I got a bite here for sure. You just feel him picking it up, eh? Tap, tap. There he is. There we go, fish on. Another little guy. We're drifting down a point here. Fish on! There you go, one, two. Double headers. This is a better one. Is it? Yeah? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna get this little guy back. We're using the graph, very important oh. trolling motor. We got some wind here. You need the net for that? Oh, nice. That's, uh, he's probably a good. Oh. oh, nice fish. Want me to grab him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good fish. Look at that. He took that right down, yeah. eh? You want to grab those um, grab pliers there? Pliers. Yeah. Trolling motor is just absolutely imperative today. We've got some pretty good winds here. Luckily, we're sheltered where we are right now, but uh, we've got some pretty good wind pushing us down the lake. So the trolling motor is actually allowing us to stay on the spot here. Blake has been up here pre-fishing for his tournament, and we actually used the uh, GPS waypoints that he had from his boat. We punched them into the GPS here, and it gets us right back to the exact spot. What we'll do here, we're not worried about ripping the tube, we'll rip the tube right off, and what Blake's gonna do is just cut the hook it's as out. tight to Thanks, the... You got it out. You got it out? There we go. Perfect. All right, nice fish, man. Thanks, buddy. There seem to be a lot of them this size in here. Yeah, right? it's a great fishery up here for sure. Let's get her back in. Well, it's we gotta get, gotta get a couple more bigger. We've got a few big ones on. That's nice fish, though. Yep, there we go. Perfect. We got him. Oh yeah, that looks, that must have been, we marked that one on the bottom there, eh? Yeah, and we went back through it. That graph just goes to show you how yeah. important that front graph is. Oh, he's all right, I can oh, grab him. He's not bad. Yeah. He's not as big as we not thought. As, not as big as You know as what I it thought. was, it's because he was down so deep, eh? Yeah. But that's the one we probably marked in about 15 feet of water. Yeah. I mean, still a measurable fish. Yeah. Over 12 inches. Most of the tournaments, they have a size limit. 12 inches. Some tournaments are 13, 13 now too, yeah. right? And uh, that would be a keepable fish over the 12 inch mark. And what you want to do when you start out in the morning, 
as Blake will attest, is you want to get your limit right off the bat as Definitely. soon as you can. Get five fish in the live well. And you fish with a lot more confidence. That's right, because you know throughout the day, as you start catching bigger fish, you can just call one out. We've actually been working our way up and casting in and working down the drop off. What we decided to do was we marked a big fish down deep on the bottom. We'll probably do this, make another drift now too. As we went up and we dropped our baits down, cast them out a little bit, let them sink to the bottom and just twitch them along the bottom as we drifted down in that deeper water. Yeah. Because when you're casting up onto the shoreline, by the time you get your lure close to the boat, it's probably in mid water. It's not going to be sitting on the bottom. So using a different presentation by drifting parallel with the with the drop off you can actually let the bait drop right to the bottom and just bounce it along there yeah that and was actually that was excellent because we marked that fish on that graph that's why we went yeah. back and picked them up we're just drifting off this weed edge right now see if we can't catch one cruising back to that crawfish color I had a fish hit it though. It was bang. There might be a bite here going, guys. Oh, okay. Fish on. Buddy. This is a good, a good one. It's oh, a good one. it's a beast. I'm going to get the net, mate. Get the net. Looks like the one we've been looking for here. You want me to jump on that trolling motor? Teamwork, right? Yeah, I'm not picking this up, bro. You're going all quiet on me. <laughs> it's coming up. Hurry up. Oh, he's out there. Looks like he's well hooked. Yeah, I think so. We've got this extra long net here. What it allows me to do to get out there, if that fish looks like it's gonna start jumping, I can scoop it way out away from the boat. Tubes, eh? They're magic. Holy. It's important in tournaments. You try and keep the fish down. You don't want that fish jumping with the risk of shaking the hook. That looks like a good fish. It's a good fish. Peel and drag on you, Blake. <laughs> Peel and drag. There he is. There, there he is. Okay. Right. Got him. We got him. Look at that. Oh, buddy. I got it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a nice fish. Let's get that tube out of there. Hopefully we can. That fish is actually just swallowed that whole bait. So then we'll pull the plastic right off the uh, right jig off the head tube. there. Yeah. So then we can get to the hook. What we're going to do, right in the bend of the hook, we're going to cut it off. And that fish will survive and will eventually lose that hook. It'll run away. There we go. Perfect. See, that fish will go back unharmed. Let's um, put them in the live one. We'll get a quick picture of you with this oh, fish. Oh, that'd be great. That's a nice fish. Look at that. Salted tube. Rice lake, smallmouth bass on salted tubes. Oh, yeah. Hey. What a beauty. Let's get them in the live one. Good netting job, too. Hey, thank you, sir. First shot. Get this in there. Yeah, let's put them in there. I'm gonna put the uh, the aerator on. The fish actually hit that bait and uh, dropped it. That's when I said, I think I had a fish there and dropped it. And that's when I let the line back out. Yeah. That's a little tournament technique that we do. If the fish actually let a little hits slack the bait, line out, drop the bait right back down. A lot of times it'll come back and I'll hit it. Fish that's on. what happened there. It worked, worked this time, mate. Worked good. <laughs> really worked good. That's a good fish. What we'll do is we'll set up a milk run here on the map and uh, work these areas very methodically, very slowly. We were kind of losing faith a little bit there this morning. We knew there were fish there. We were marking them on the graph. If there are fish there and there are bait, don't move off the spot. Keep working it. We kept going back up, For sure. drifting back down. That's one of our tournament techniques. You never leave fish to yeah. go try to find more fish. They were here and uh, we got one. Let's see if we can't get some more. Exactly. We'll all right. All right, let's get a picture of you. CPR, brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. Say bass, mate. Bass mate. <laughs> One more. Okay, smile. Whoa. Bass. Perfect. We got it. You've got to release fish like this. Let's get her in the water. Oh man, it's so nice to see these guys go back, I tell you. There she goes. Thanks Perfect. for playing. One thing I've noticed here, and I want to point it out, if you look behind us here, all these boats have just moved in. They saw Blake get the fish. We had one boat on that spot when we caught it. As soon as we got that in and we landed it, everybody came in. One guy came in and actually anchored right on top of us when they do move in. And if they do get onto the fish that you're catching, they're not going back. You hear them flopping around in the boat sometimes and you know those fish are going home to the table. You've got to get those big fish back in the water. 
And a lesson to be learned here is, as you've seen, these guys moved right in on the spot. They're quite within their rights to fish where they are, but show a little etiquette. You know, if somebody's fishing an area and they're catching fish, fish around them, whatever, but don't move right in on top of them. Unfortunately, when we're doing tournaments, when we're catching fish, a lot of people, they just come up, they see you catch a couple fish, and they just drop their anchor, they'll pull right up on you. You know, fortunately, when we do do the tournaments, they're all live release. I say the big fish like that, they go in, they go in, they get weighed, we're kept in a live well, and they're released for another day. It's actually a prerequisite in the tournaments. Yes. So you have to have a functioning live well to oh. keep those fish alive. Oh, definitely. Plus you're penalized if a fish dies. I guess congratulations are in order. That was a beautiful fish, mate. Thanks very and, much. And uh, looks like you found another spot for your <laughs> tournament. Can't wait. Exactly. Let's get back to the fishing. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Blake's four and a half pound bass came off a submerged island point. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. Water depths on top of the submerged point were three feet by the island and 12 feet as the point tapered down into the main lake. The outside edge of the ridge quickly tapered down to depths anywhere between 10 and 14 feet. The inside edge displayed shallower depths of four to eight feet. A prominent weed line ran the entire length of the ridge on the deeper side of the point. The weeds appeared healthier midway down the weed line. This theory was reinforced when fish appeared on the graph. The strike zone was a band of water between the edge of the weed line to depths between 10 and 12 feet. It quickly became clear that the bass were holding around the healthier fauna. Due to increasing winds, it was no longer possible to fish the structure methodically. The boys decided to drift parallel to the edge of the structure. By dragging their tubes, they were able to keep their baits close to the bottom and in the strike zone. Using the electric motor in combination with his graph, Sean was able to perform an accurate controlled drift. Blake's fish devoured a crawfish color salted tube on a quarter ounce jig head. The bait was cast a short distance from the boat and allowed to sink to the bottom. Subtle twitches were incorporated to add action. If you feel a fish tapping or pick up your bait, allow the fish slack line. When you feel the weight of the fish, set the hook and hang on. Other top producing baits on this trip were deep diving crankbaits in hot chub and shad patterns. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. So I know that when I used to fish tournaments, we always sort of would set up a milk route. You, you, I would imagine you do the same thing. I'm very familiar with the lake, but when we do tournaments, even if you're familiar with it or it's a new lake, using these navigational charts, that's the first start to pre-fish. We look around for transitional areas. With the chart, it shows here you got deep water with some rock and some weeds right there. That's a good transition point. Same with this one here, deep water around it. The R's marked for rock right here. That'd be a good place to start. Um, worrying about weather conditions with wind, certain areas for backup points, and certain areas like this where it's, there's some shallow areas with some pads, some weeds, everything else. And we'll also look for wind, so if it's coming down, we can actually sit inside some of these areas and possibly up the river. Also, these charts, they're invaluable for safety. Right here on Rice Lake, we've got a train trestle. You've got to go through the buoy markers. There's a lot of people that have lost their lower unit out there. I've heard that. I guess one thing we should point out is what we're doing here is we're actually fishing some backup spots for you, right? Right. When you're fishing these tournaments, uh, days like today where it's rough like this, you want some spots where you can come in and possibly get largemouth. We're using a variety of baits in here in the shallower water in about uh, anywhere from three to a foot of water, right? Right. And uh, Blake here is using a tube with a pegged sinker above it, about half ounce is that? That's half ounce and then for the real thick stuff I was throwing three quarters. And that'll allow you to penetrate through the lily pads or the slop, whatever it is you're fishing. Right. With the rat here, you want to work this slowly across the top of the lily pads and over the slop. Anytime you see holes or pockets, work it across there too. Often the fish will just come up and slam it. Uh, other techniques you could use would be jig and pig, uh, spinner baits around these outside deeper edges. But the bottom line is, come in, find some backup spots like this in case the weather's bad, uh, in case the fishing for the smallmouth is slow. Yeah, if come they're not on, you need something else to fish for. So. Exactly. And Largemouth can be a good backup fish for a tournament. I guess we're both pretty fortunate to have uh, the wives that we have. I know uh, Amanda, your wife's been a true angel this weekend. She made dinner for us last night, so thank you very much for both myself and the crew. And I know she has a lot of patience for your passion. I mean, she's basically a fishing widow many weekends, right? <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... 
That's one of the nicknames for her. As soon as bass season opens up, uh, she's the fishing widow. But you know, Sean, she's she supported me all the way through since I've been doing these tournaments. She's been absolutely great coming to the weigh-ins. And uh, it's a big part when you're doing tournaments to make yeah. sure that you have that. Yeah, I know I um, it's important, like you say, because you, you don't want to be out there worrying and you don't want to be any friction at the house, nope. as they say. Good fish. Oh, it feels like a good, oh, it's a big one. It looks like a walleye, actually. Does it? Yeah, it came up quickly there. Just slam that. Uh... Oh, it's a big walleye. <laughs> hey, listen, I'll tell you what. We're not in the tournament right now, so right now they're all good fish to me. That's a nice fish. Wow. Broad daylight. You gotta love those crankbaits, eh, Blake? Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that. We're looking for bass, but that's a heck of a fish, that's buddy. That's a nice... Oh, it just popped out. Just popped out. That's a... Let me grab the fish while you got the net out. That is a beautiful... Rice Lake Walleye. I mean, that's a, a good sized fish up here, right? Oh my Look God. Look at that guy. Beautiful. Nice fish. That's pretty good for a Rice Lake Walleye. Broad daylight. Broad daylight. <laughs> Bright sunshine. All right, let's get her back. There he goes. Nice one. Perfect. What'd you get him on? Sweet. My secret little crankbait. <laughs> and I tell you, this thing's been dynamite. I actually lost a big smallmouth on it earlier. I mean, we've got two good smallmouth off the spot, and now it just shows you that there's good walleye using the area yeah. too. So, I mean, you can catch anything. Good thing to point out to the viewers, actually, is that walleye and smallmouth will relate to the same structure. Oh, so definitely, definitely. We started out primarily using um, tube baits here. Blake has kindly put out some of the colors that are very productive on this lake. We've got two different types of tubes. This particular one is scented with a rattle inside, and uh, these are heavily salted, and they actually put the salt in when they pour the plastic. When we were dragging the tubes, uh, we were using a regular tube jig head here. And what we try and do is try and get those skipping right along the bottom yeah, there. just popping them up and down and dragging them down. And the second way to rig it for skipping under those trees and so on, we've actually got inside here a little bell sinker. What you want to do is push the bell sinker up inside, wait till you feel the eye of the bell sinker, uh, push your hook through the head of the tube there, measure it up with where it's going to go through, Pinch the uh, tube around, make sure it goes straight through the tube, out the other side. And as you can see, that is rigged weedless. But if a fish grabs it, he will get hooked. And don't forget, Sean, we're trying to get out of these windy conditions today. Same idea, having it hooked weedless. But we actually put a half ounce worm weight pegged. That's when I was pitching the bait up into the air. It was driving through the lily pads with the flipping stick. And that's how we're searching out for some largemouth today. The other primary plastic that we were using here are these soft plastic twitch worms. We've got a hook here, actually, that goes along with this. What you want to do is you screw that into the top of the worm, make sure the hook goes straight through, comes out the other side, and it'll sit something like that. If you're fishing really heavy cover, you can actually tuck the point of the hook back into the plastic there a little bit. Great search bait that we were using are these deep diving crankbaits. And as always, good old spinner bait. I'm never without one, as you know. Great search bait for uh, early in the morning, evening, windy days like we've had around Rock Points. It's been bloody windy up here, that's for sure. As far as tools go, never leave without a good old pair of pliers. You're gonna need them for getting those hooks out. If the fish get hooked deep, don't leave without a good pair of cutters. As far as rods and reels go, for the spinner baits, rats, and crankbaits, we've got a six foot six medium action bait casting rod, spooled with 14 pound test, and a good quality bait casting reel. For the flipping stick, we've got a seven foot six heavy action flipping stick, telescopic, so you can get it in your rod lockers, spooled up with 50 pound test, braided super line, and a good quality bait casting reel. For the tubes, both skipping and dragging, we're using a six foot six medium action spinning rod with a medium sized spinning reel here, spooled up with 30 pound test braided super line. Oh yeah. Nice fish. Beautiful. Another crankbait fish. Oh, you want to grab that net? I don't want this guy getting off there, Blake. This drop off here is just incredible, eh? We've got weed, rock, and uh, Oh, wow. Okay, there he goes. He got him. Nice. Good netting job, buddy. <laughs> oh, look at that. Crankbait fish in the middle of the day. 
<laughs> you can't beat it. Look at that. This fish has been caught before too. Yeah, right there on the lip. Uh, I'm going to uh, do a little See operation here. Oh, they're sharp hooks. Yeah. He wasn't going anywhere, was he? No, sir. Look at that. There we go. Look at that. So I guess we know where you're fishing in the tournament, right? We better keep this a little bit secret here. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's basically it's time to go. We've got three or four good smallmouth spots going right now, so it's uh, time to move off this one and leave some for me for the tournament. <laughs> exactly. We're going to head off and try some other spots for Blake here and uh, get out here, Rice Lake. Well, Blake, thanks for coming on the show, mate. It's been thanks a lot of me. fun. I tell you what, I've learned a lot. We're going to move off this spot now and give you a chance in the tournament. Get up here to Rice Lake. Try some of these big smallmouth bass on crankbaits, tubes. I'm Sean Rickard. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for yet another urban outdoor adventure. Oh, it's another rockfish. Jesus. It wasn't moving. That's so weird. That's two rockfish for you today.